Welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Today we're going to plant an apricot tree. Show you how to keep them small. And this is just basically a repeat of my other backyard orchard cultured videos. Just another example. Let's get started. That's it. Let me go get the other shovel. That's good. You can leave that just, uh, let's go for the depth now. What Sam's doing is digging us a hole about, about 18 to 20 inches in diameter. With planting bare root trees, you want, you want some width to it if you, can, if you can get it. This is hard clay with some sand in it right here. I've had two peach trees in this hole and they never did good. So hopefully this third time will be a charm. It's looking good. Good job, Sam. Now, my nursery sent me an apricot bound up with two pawpaw trees here. These are bare roots, so we need to open it up very carefully and see what we got in here through all this tape. When you buy a bare root tree, it will be packed in some sort of moisture retaining material. Oftentimes it's sawdust, sometimes it's a gel, sometimes it's shredded paper. This time it looks like there's a gel down in there. So I'm just going to split this tape very carefully. I don't want to cut roots there. All right. I don't want to cut my leg open either. The benefit of bare root trees is that they are cheaper to ship than a potted tree. We've got some gel in here and we've got some dry roots. I can tell those need to be soaked. And that's one thing you'll want to do when you get your bare root trees out is put them in a bucket of water for a little bit while you're preparing your hole. Here we can have some pawpaw trees. They're kind of wrapped up in there. We'll deal with those later. But this is the apricot. And it's in there. I don't know what's holding on to that. Let's see here. There we go. Wow, what a root system. This is what we get. That's what they mean by bare root. And you can see this gel is packed in there but there's not much of it so we're going to soak this in a barrel of water while we finish that hole and Sam we're going to need a wider hole this has got some pretty good roots to it all right all right we'll just put it in here for now that's a better fit let those roots get hydrated and we'll get our hole finished how's it coming over here going pretty good all right let me get let me take a turn all right See that sand there? Mm -hmm. That'll help drain this hole. All right. Loose. I do want some width on this though. That, those are some wide roots. And that's a good head start. The more roots we have, the uh, more resources that dormant tree has pumped and stored down in those roots. And the better it will come back when it breaks bud. Okay, here we have our tree. Man, that's a well-developed rootstock. That rootstock is like an inch and a half thick. All right, let's sit this in here. Just like that. We're a little bit too deep because we don't want to bury our graft union. So let's put a little bit of sod down in there. See if we can rest on that. That's going to be perfect right there. All right, Sam. What we want to do is start getting some of that looser dirt. Especially the sandy stuff. And we want to fill in, yeah, all that stuff. We want to just fill in where we've just dug out around those fine roots. And you really want to try to get this stuff packed in here when you, when you plant these. Get those roots where they're not circling so much. I'm going to actually put the sod upside down around the edges and that grass will decompose down in there. Now you want to plant these bare root trees, and really any, well, bare root trees, in the soil that they're going to have to grow in. What we don't want is to amend this soil thinking we're going to give this tree a, a helping hand. Because what will happen, as I've said before, is this, this tree will get real cozy down in there. 
and won't send its roots out foraging for the resources in the native soil that it has to live in. Try to pack this down in here best we can. All right, I'm going to water it in a little bit before we finish it off so we can get some of that soil to go down into the hole a little better. And this water was frozen just a couple of days ago. See, we've got that hole right there. Did you see that, that uh, go yep. down? All right, that's all the water we're gonna need. Really wanna work that down in there around those fine roots. We won't have to water this tree in now that we've got some good water in there. Get your hands dirty. Try to get the, the finer stuff that we have here onto the roots. What we'll do is we will come back and mulch heavily over this hole once we've got it filled in. I don't have any mulch at the moment, so I'll have to go get some. And that mulch will help suppress this grass growth around here for about a year. And uh, then you'll have to do it again. All right, I think we got it. All right, Sam, thank you for your help. I appreciate that. There will be YouTube revenue for you. You can always tell where the graft union is because the rootstock will be thicker. And if I cleaned this off of that dirt, you'd see there's scar tissue around where this scion wood, this is the variety we want, was grafted onto the rootstock. Now that rootstock is selected for various traits, uh, disease resistance, uh, vigor, but if you grew just from the rootstock, uh, you wouldn't get a very good tasting fruit. They are selected and bred for other traits. Um, I'm not, I don't remember what kind of rootstock that is, whether it's a dwarfing rootstock, but you can, you can have rootstocks that help to dwarf the tree and keep it small. But uh, I'm interested in disease resistant and very vigorous rootstocks. Although this tree had a lot of roots on that bare rootstock, there's a whole lot of top growth here, and we don't need it all. So to give this tree the shape we want, and to give this tree um, a good start at putting on branches where we want them, we're going to prune it. This is clearly grown as a central leader by the nursery, but I don't want that form. I want a goblet shape, and I want to put four maybe five scaffolds and I've got them here going in perfect directions what a great tree hey get out of there so I'm gonna prune off the the dead little dead wood here and there always make your cuts right at the collar where a branch meets the the, the limb the supporting limb uh, don't cut it way out here you know don't cut it and leave a stub a stump or a little stub that stub will rot always leave a good long branch unless you're gonna remove it and remove it near the tree. So, here's the thinking. In backyard orchard culture, we're growing trees and keeping them small. We don't want them to get out of reach. We don't wanna be harvesting fruit on a ladder. And so we wanna keep these, these trees relatively small, about as tall as you can reach. And to do that, we stunt them and uh, keep them pruned. Uh, we also wanna grow this tree with an open center. We wanna form a goblet. I'll show you what that looks like on my other stone fruit trees in a moment. To do that, I'm selecting this branch, this branch, this branch, this branch, and this branch. They're all growing pretty much opposite of one another, and that's what we want. We want this goblet shape. That means I don't need all this up here. So I'm going to come in here at the collar, and we're going to chop that off. We have just removed a lot of this tree, but that's okay. In order to keep all of these branches uh, growing at the same rate, they need to be the same height. Um, let's see. This branch here is a little higher than the other, so I'm going to come and I'm going to top it right above an outward facing bud. Now they're all about the same. We're going to leave this tree alone, and when it wakes up, um, it has a good chance of growing real vigorously. Hey, get out of there. Get out of there. 
quit digging in the dirt. So here's what we have now. If you look down the tree trunk, you can see that the scaffold branches go out like a star, a five-pointed star. And that's what we want. We want these to be our supporting branches, and we want them all to thicken up and grow their fruiting wood like forks out there. That's the concept. So that tree is perfectly pruned for now. Let's take a look over here. Here is the same concept on this plum tree. This plum tree is two years old and you can see those four scaffolds down there have bulked up quite a bit. The problem is, let me illustrate, see how huge those three are and all the growth coming up there? And then this other scaffold we chose is much more puny and not as tall. That's because these have apical dominance. And so they get all the resources and the uh, energy from the tree and that guy just gets the leftovers. So what we need to do is either just live with it or we need to stunt these big branches, but we're not gonna do that here in the winter. Winter pruning encourages growth. Stunting in the summer is when we'll come and take these branches down. Here's a one-year-old peach tree. We chopped this one earlier this year when we planted it in the, in the late winter. And you see the freeze has killed off the leaves, but the tree's fine. You see, we have three main scaffolds on this one. This guy, we could grow out if we wanted to, but we need to make that decision. It's kind of close to the other one, and it's kind of puny. This tree is really wanting to make this its main leader. We'll have to work on this tree in the summer as well to stunt that dominant leader so the others can catch up. But I'm pleased with the performance of that tree. Okay, now we have our third stone fruit, an apricot tree. We've got a peach, we've got a plum, we've got an apricot. You want to put it in a place that gets at least, at the very minimum, six hours of sunlight. And from the way the sun transits my property, we should get that. Hopefully these, these uh, stone fruits will bear fruit soon. That's a pretty mature apricot tree. And that's a two-year-old plum tree. And that peach tree, I don't expect fruit this coming year, but maybe next year. The way they're growing, they're looking good, very encouraging. All right, so what'll happen? This tree will begin to wake up as it breaks dormancy and will begin growing uh, with all that energy down in that root system stored down in uh, below ground. We'll pump all that up, wake up these buds, and then we'll take an evaluation of this tree and see how, it, uh, see how it's gonna grow for us and where we need to make our pruning cuts in the summer. Well, there we go, just another video on how to plant a bare root tree and this will go on our backyard orchard culture playlist and you can go check that out and see how to grow all these fruit trees in a small space keeping the trees small uh, you know I got what 10 fruit trees back here in my little backyard and uh, looking forward to getting some fruit happy gardening to you guys we'll talk to you next time bye bye